here. Yeah. Sorry Start about praying. the whole parking <laughs> situation and shit. Yeah. Uh, what, what were we saying? We were talking about Miami. We were Miami. talking about get in, get out, get in, get out. <laughs> Miami. That's where it started for me, though. Yeah. With the art. With yeah. Yeah. Just went down there, took a shot. Art Basil. I think it was eighteen. And the 17, I had my house had just burned down. So my house burned down in June. It was June of 17. I had been out of prison, I think at that time, probably like three years. And so I had just started getting my life together. Yeah. You know, took three years, you know, and a lot of shit, you know. Now, to now, that now, point. now hold on, hold on, because yeah. I, I, I've been going prison. On, I've been yeah. going online and, and you've been, you're originally from Chicago. You moved yeah. to Texas. Yeah. But before, before we get into your house burning down, how, how do you introduce yourself? I mean, you're so many things. You're an artist, but you're not. Uh, you know, now I'm, you're being known for being an artist. Yeah. But before for me, you want, I, I just tell people. What's I'm your a fame? Creator. creator. You're a creator. creator. I like to create things. And I like an inventor, a writer, an artist, explorer, curi- just curious, man. You know, I'm always yeah. curious. That's what keeps me going, you know. But uh, a creator, more than anything, I just like to create things. I got seven kids, <laughs> so I wow. like yeah, so I create. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. That's like yeah. that's a master. That's yeah. the master painting yeah, of all yeah. things. My last three are really seven cool. kids. Yeah. What, what, what's the age gaps? Uh, Thirty to one month old. <gasps> just had one. Wow. Yeah. Her name's Lightning. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Yeah, so Lightning. I, yeah. So I got real. So my first four kids, they all got Lightning. Aged. Yeah, Lightning Williams. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. Well, that's my dope. my boy is Da Vinci. Da Vinci Williams. And then I got... Legally. Love. Legally. Like da that's on the birth certificate. Birth da Vinci Williams. So my first four, I was fast, I was like obsessed with AJW. All the kids had to have my initials. Yeah. Right? Arthur, Ju- you know, my firstborn and Alexis Juliet. And then, and then these last three was on my, you know, on my uh, artistic thinking. Right? So I got Da Vinci, Love, and Lightning. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Love? Love is my daughter. And, and Lightning. Too. And Lightning. Yeah. Legally. 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 And mom's yeah. cool. Loves it. She's the one who, I, I was kind of struggling with the lightning because we thought, it was, I thought we were going to have a boy. So I said, yeah. if it's a boy, we're going to name Lightning because I was struck by lightning. Yeah. Like real deal. 2004, Williamsburg, Illinois. That's a whole nother story. Like we'll legit, legit? Legit. Lost all my hair. Felt like sand for three days. Crazy shit, man. That was a wild one. I was running some money from uh, St. Louis. Wow. Yeah. That's a crazy story. But No, I mean, actually, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, when you look back at life, you know, especially one that's been so just, you know, up and down, you sometimes question, is it real? You know, like, like when I tell people when we, when I'm talking with someone and, I, and, and a memory pops up and I, and I bring it up, it, it almost feels like bullshit. Yeah. Right. And you, and you, because you're like, damn, did that really happen to me, man? You know? Yeah, it sounds so fucking it absurd. Sounds so, yeah, it's absurd, right? Even like, saying yeah. it after living yeah. it sounds so But that's so absurd. just like one of a thousand, though, right? Yeah. You know, from prison riots, from projects south side of Chicago to hanging out with the old gangsters on, uh, in Chicago, learning how to print money. You know, all these things happen, and, and they all seem fascinating, right? As I'm older now, like during the time, prison wasn't fascinating, right? You know what I'm saying? That place was a hellhole. But I look at it now, it's fascinating because... I did some fascinating shit while I was in prison. Yeah. I studied, I read, I painted, I invented, right? I let my mind be free in prison. That was where I actually, you know, found, it took three times though. I went to prison three times, 12 years altogether, you know? And So uh, three separate times, 12 years total. Yeah, I did like two and a half, two and a half. Because the, 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 the counterfeiting was uh, originally 15 years, right? Yeah. It was 105 months, so it was. They carries 20 years, 20 year sentence. They gave me 105 on the second one, but um, counterfeit technically <laughs> Bro, don't even carry a lot. Of, what's really crazy is counterfeit and don't really carry a lot of time, right? It's getting caught with equipment and stuff like that that gives you the time, the right? extra time. Yeah, so they never, they had never caught me with nothing. It's all conspiracy. It, it, it isn't that. Um it's kind of fucked up, huh? Yeah. Because because you think about it, 
the people doing counterfeiting or the fucking, you know, white collar Wall Street shit, yeah. you know, like they get three years, four years, five, whatever. Some don't even and, get nothing. And some don't even get nothing. Get of nothing. course. They, the have, they, have, thing, they have the money, you know, yeah, they have yeah. the money and they pay for it. And, yeah. they, and, you know, and they do that shit. But then you got the people struggling on the streets, you know, stealing yeah. a loaf of bread or fucking stealing yeah. from 7-Eleven. And, and it starts off with like a day in jail and then you get caught again. And now yeah. it's like four days in jail. Well, I, you know, when I look back at it, I, I. The seven, the, the 105 months got my attention. You know, when you're 21 and you get two years, you're working out, reading. Yeah, you're like, fuck yeah. And boom, it's done. Oh, man, that wasn't too bad, right? You can get hit again to give you another two and a half. That's what I got, 36 months. And I rode through that one, you know? And then the, the third one, though, was, you know, it was a long one. It was where calendars were going by. It was 33 yeah. when I got locked up. I got out when I was 40, you know? I felt 30 still, though. You know what I said? I was, yo- I was yoked up, man. <laughs> I was yoked up when I got out. But, you know, and uh, but prison was, uh, you know, I started in, in Manchester. They sent me to a, a medium high because I kept my mouth shut. Yeah. Then they shot me over to uh, Big Spring, Texas, because there was a riot and they needed white people, right? And then uh, I got real sick in Big Spring. Uh, they, locked our, uh, they locked our prison down. With that first SARS that hit, right? That was, man, that was wild. So the first SARS, the one that everyone's been like bitching about lately, well, the first one in 09 hit our prison. They locked it down for six months, but there was no political unrest. There was the, the country was in 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 no, by no means the way it is now. Yeah, it's so hyper partisan now, man. It's scary. Right, they're weaponizing. Terrifying. Yeah, they're weaponizing the courts. They're weaponizing law enforcement. They're weaponizing everything now, right? And there's the proof is in the pudding when you see Democrats filing Democratic judges' vicinities, and you see Republicans filing Republican judges. The judges go along with that thinking, right? Yeah. When it, a judge should be not either, right? But we've completely lost neutral. touch of that. Yeah, yeah, it should be neutral, but that hasn't been in a long time, if ever, maybe. You know, but now it's so blatant because social media. And the media is so present that we get to see it. Real time. Real time. Yeah. And, and, and then we get to see the there's injustice. No control. Yeah. no control. Well, there's no law enforcement right now. Yeah. Right? These cats at the top, man, they're walking free, man. They do whatever they want now, man. And there's no one to stop them. Even even when, uh, so I, I, I posted something recently. I, re, I saw, I'm, I love money, right? I printed it, right? But I didn't just love printing it. I love the the energy of it, the beauty of it, right? What it can offer, the freedom it can offer, yeah, right? Uh, a person getting you know health treatment from it, right? Or, or you know saving life treat any man money could, could could do a lot of good, man, right? But when just a certain amount of people have the majority of it, then that good doesn't get spread around. Right? And that's why you have homelessness and prisons and riots and all this stuff because people are. Uh, they're, they're, they're upset right now. They're disturbed, right? They're not living right. right. Only a certain few are. And so I, 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 I became fascinated with the economics of it, how it moves, you know? And so I, I had just recently read a, an article on uh, the deficit, how it's grown since World War II, right? History is a magnificent thing if people pay attention to it. And Yeah, but they want to make it disappear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You and know? there's a reason why, because when you look at history... Eisenhower said something as the last uh, speech he said, he said, beware of the military complex. Beware of it, right? Nobody really knew what he was saying, you know. What it meant. What it meant. But then you've seen uh, over the years, you know, I think this year it was 800 and something billion was given to military. Right? There isn't even an agency even close. Matter of fact, I think all the other agencies combined don't even... amount to 800 billion almost a trillion dollars this year yeah when you got schools falling apart roads falling apart airports falling apart you have roads uh, ro- schools, everything man yeah, everything. Yeah, it's just why it's wild what's happening and then you see all this money being spent on things that you're just not understanding that you don't personally see right i don't know what's going on in europe i don't know what's going on in asia they say we have to be safe but that's the, that's the sadness of humanity right now the fact that more money has to be spent on military to be safe than, say, food or housing or, right? That should what, what should make humanity safe, you know, homes and, yeah. and 
and shelter. abundance and shelter and food and, and you, these things. Go ahead. We, we were talking about this earlier, right before we started. And, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but I just wanted to say this. Yeah. People say money is the root of all problems oh. or all the money is the root of all evil. And it's not. Oh. Poverty, Poverty is the root of all evil because that's sure. where people rape, yeah. kill, steal, yeah. hurt each other. Like people don't fucking get that, you know. And yeah. I wanted to tell you that earlier. But yeah, no, I mean, I lived in it in the projects, yeah. you know, in South Side Chicago was rough. You know, I mean, we had gangs, drugs. I mean, I, and what I, I had a culture shop because we went from we went from the suburbs in, Sch- in Schaumburg. You know, my mom was mentally ill. My dad took off on us, you know, so she didn't know how to take care of us. She ended up in a mental institute. We were ended up, we ended up at a, uh, you know, um, we ended up in foster care during that time. And uh, when we got, when they gave us back, they literally, we had to go to, to court. She was homeless. She had just got out of the mental institute. She had no home. Yeah, well, th- th- that's because uh, you guys were going through that, but your father had left, right? Yeah, my And then father. your mom was doing everything on her own. Everything on her own. She and couldn't then handle you it. guys became yeah. Uh, yeah. Fo- uh, yeah. foster children yeah. for, for what, a few months? It was like months? 90 days, I think yeah. they put us. And then she got out of the well, hospital. What, what, may I ask, what was the reason why? Was it because she was homeless or that people well, she was, complained? She, had, or? She, she went in, she was, she, her, the bipolar episode she had, uh, was always Red religion. Flags. Yeah. Well, she ended up coming out the house naked, screaming, "Jesus was returning." Mm. That's really what happened. Yeah. So neighbors called and fucking neighbors said, called, this, took her off. She's she's yeah. Tr- she's tripping. Tripping. Here's yeah, three. She kids. lost her mind. Yeah. Here's three kids. I, I think I was 11 at the time. My sister was 10, and my brother was seven. Yeah. Boom. They scooped us up quick. Was, yeah. They don't give a fuck. No. No. no there was no. Don't question. Give a fuck. And then we didn't have no family. You know. Wait, wait, what year was this? 80s, 90s. Uh that was like an 80, early 80s, somewhere in there. Okay. You know, because we were in the Salvation Army during the Super Bowl with the Bears, first one, 85. I remember, so it was right. 84-ish, you know. That's and why uh, football exists, so we can yeah, get a time stamp. Keep, time stamp. Well, who won that Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of keep you in line. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was uh, the year that we ended up in the projects. You know, we, we were in, we weren't, we went from. Uh, and it's so hard for, for a mother to get her kids back once oh, you go into man. the system. Yeah. Well, they, what, what this situation was kind of sad. They were home, we were homeless, and they gave us back to her. And then they shot us over to the Salvation Army on the north side, and we stayed there for 90 days, and then they put us in the projects on 31st and Halstead. And uh, that that's where everything, you know. So you went from the suburbs, little white community, you know, into, you know, south side of Chicago, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like in a matter of it's like, like the that. the craziest shit ever. Yeah. You know, my unfortunately, my, my brother, you know, he, he, he didn't really make it through it. No. My oh, sister, sorry, she yeah. had her issues. You know, yeah. um, I was shot at seventeen. You know, I had six friends murdered. The leg, right? Yeah, I had six friends murdered by the time I think I was twenty. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I got out of Chicago and went south. You know, Texas. Just the gangs were just too much, man. It was just, you know, now I it, mean, my my neighborhood was mostly like uh, Italian, Irish, Hispanic. You had African Americans on the other side. You know, the projects was mixed, of course, but then. If you ventured a little bit uh, east, you'd get into an Italian neighborhood, you know. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, no, the, the, that's what made me tough, though. Of course. You know, I mean, I was picked on a lot, but then, you know, you, you, you learn to not be picked on no more. Right. You know, at some point, you find your, your strength, you know, and and then you find a way to survive. And I think the streets is what caused, you know... It gave me um, that 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 desire to 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 survive and to live. You know, like I, the first crime I broke into meters to feed my family. Right? Yeah. I mean, so it wasn't. I uh, didn't. That, that's a but bust that out. Like there were there was no food at home. Yeah, there was nothing at the house. I had just came home from school, and uh, my mom was crying in the kitchen. And, you know, I'm, I go open the thing. She said, I don't know what to do. We have no food. Don't, nothing you know, in the fridge. Nothing. I mean, it, that shit exists. Yeah, you know? I know. That shit exists. Even you know? now. Yeah. Even, even now, now for yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. And so I, I grab my little brother. We hit the street. We're walking down Halston. I'm hitting the meters. Bing. Right. Bing. I'm mad. I'm hitting them because I'm mad. Yeah. And then I hear the change. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. There's some money in there. And so me and my brother, we attacked the meter. And we figured it out that there was these two little pins that if you could turn, you could pop it. Right. And so we went in the, the, the alley. We got a little piece of metal. We made this little thing and we started popping these meters. 
think we got like 80 something dollars. Went to Tony's supermarket, dropped a bag of change on the thing, paid for the groceries, took them home. My mom actually spanked me. She sent me upstairs and she told me, man, true story. She says, she said, son, she goes, you don't, you know, God will take care of us. I said, he did. He showed me how to break into the meters. Yeah, I love that line. I believed it, right? Yeah. I really believed it. And, he, and even during my counterfeit times, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual man, you know. Um, let everyone beat their own. You know, I've, I've experienced some really interesting things in life that let me know that there's something beyond this, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's always kind of guided me even in the criminal world. You know, I always felt like there was something giving me the extra uh, street smart to survive, right? Because a lot of my friends did it. A lot of my friends didn't make it. Then there were those who did, right? But I always felt like I I wanted to to be able to be free, right? And so 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 money was the way to be free. You know, to to be secure and, and to be able to do what humans should be doing, which right. is enjoying living and being good to one another. You know, so even when I was printing money, man, I would give away. I was like Robin Hood, man. We would buy all children's stuff, give it to the Salvation Army because that's that's the shelter I was in. You know. Yeah. When did you get the sign of like, okay, this is done? I better not. Man, do this. honestly, man, that just happened like six years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, bro. Yeah, that's just, just, you know. Well, they what? say, yeah, they say counterfeiting is the most addictive thing if you look it up. Counterfeiting currency is more addictive than heroin, they say. They say the recidivism rate for a counterfeiter, the old school ones, right, was like 90%. It was almost impossible for a counterfeiter to retire. Yeah. Right? I've been free nine years. I'm retired, you know. And, but about six years ago, I was out of prison. It was right when things happened, man. Maybe I was out of prison two years ago. So maybe it was seven years ago. And I had some odd jobs I was doing. I was First, I was a janitor down on 6 West Hubbard, man, cleaning toilet bowls. Loved it, though, right? 15 bucks an hour. Then What, what, what made you love it? Because it was my first job. So, 40 so you, years you, old. You, you were proud of it. I was proud of it. Like, you were like, okay, I'm, I'm yeah, doing something. yeah. Because yeah. I had just got out of prison. This was my an old timer. Freedom. Yeah, freedom, man. Freedom. You know? And so I'd go to work, man. I'd drive my bike. I didn't even have a car. I'd drive my bike, man, down downtown. I loved it, man. I'd, I'd, I'd smoke it, too, because I was in great shape when I got out. Man, you yeah. Know? And, uh, and I just loved that job. And I did it for like six months. Jumped. Started transporting vehicles, which was cool, right? I had the baddest cars ever, but the brokest, you know? Yeah. I'd be driving Panamera with $10 in my pocket, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> straight up. But I had a bad gas car. prices. Yeah. Oh, oh God, man. <laughs> well, up. he gave me the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm But uh, I did that for about a year. And uh, the cat that I worked for, man, this cat named Jeff Schnackis, he owned the place. And he was kind of like my first mentor since I've been free. So what I... What I absolutely, completely uh, believe the reason I'm sitting here right now with you is because I've had great people along the way that gave me that little bit of lift and that little bit of experience and mentorship along the way. Yeah. Right. So even though I was only making like 15 bucks an hour transporting cars, the time I would be spending with my boss, he would be teaching me how to how to be better. You know, and what was so interesting is it's like everybody saw potential in you. Yeah. And they wanted to show you the way. Yeah. And him, you know, he he was he was I used to call him a horse trader, man, because he'd be flipping these cars all crazy, you know. And I'd be like, man, show me the game. Show me the game. Don't just let me drive them. I want to know. I want to know how to flip these cars like this. Yeah. And he never would. He would never show me. He said, this ain't what you, you're supposed to be doing. This ain't your life. If I show you, you'll be stuck here. Yeah. And I used to get mad at him about that. Because, you know, I see these other cats, man, making three, 4000 a week sometimes. You're like, man. fuck, I want that. Like, that's what I want. I don't want to be doing $15 an hour driving all over, you know. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't, you know. And so I eventually left that, and then I went and uh, delivered liquor for Wart's Liquors, man. 500 cases every morning with them young bucks. 
did that for like, man, I did that for a minute. And then I gave up. I gave up. I said, man, $15 an hour ain't doing it. Yeah, I can't reality, buy it. reality hit you. Reality hit me. So I was you trying could, and trying and trying. You're barely making rent. But I had to have a roommate. I couldn't even make rent on my own, you know? And so, you know, I, 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 I got to the point, man, where I was just like, man, how do they do this? And, it, and one thing it did for certain, man, is it gave me a whole new respect for the working man, you know? It, it let me, it showed me, man, like, damn, people work hard, man, to take care of themselves. Yeah. Right? You know, especially, when been, especially when somebody's, like, crossing the border, Oh. Risking their life, yeah, and then they're they're living four or five people in, in, in a fucking house, a house yeah, yeah. and they're sending like half their paycheck back, back to home. back yeah. back home wherever yeah, they're yeah. sending it to, and you're like fuck, like th- this is it, it's it, tough, it, it's fucking tough, yeah. But and I do. and I actually it hit me harder because uh, I, I was doing a project in Tahana Tahana Hills, Tahana Hills in Arizona. Uh, and that's where, like, the main Caterpillar uh, company, you know, the construction site? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing some filming out there. And on one day of the shootings, I had to, like, drive out. And I, I actually saw somebody that was crossing the border. Wow. Dead. Dead. Yeah. Like, he was just under the shade in a sleeping position. And it just looks like he found a place for shelter and never woke up. And I was like, fuck. And when police came, anyways, they came back two, three days later. And they said, this guy was, like, from Guatemala. So he yeah. went from Guatemala all the way through Mexico, yeah. all the way up. He was oh, probably yeah. walking in the same socks and shoes they were saying for fucking six weeks, yeah. seven weeks. Yeah. And the fucked up part is, is like 10 minutes max, there was a fucking little river, uh, a lake kind of thing. Really? Water, you know, and they say yeah. it was dehydration. It was dehydration. Yeah, no. But yeah, this is happening every fucking well, day. Right now it's happening. Yeah, real yeah. bad problem now, you know. But, um. Yeah, so working, so I, I realized, you know, that, that at that, so I came to the point, man, where I was like, man, I can't do this no more. Pay it's my child enough. support, you know, paying my rent, you know, I just, and so, you know, I, 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 I started to go down a road that, that wasn't good, you know, started to look into things that weren't good. What was interesting, though, and probably one of the things that saved my life was that from the time I went to prison, uh, offset printing had been going out, out. They were bringing everything digital, right? And all the, all, the, all the offset equipment was being sold off to, like, Columbia and, like, overseas, you know? Yeah. And so it was nothing but digital. So when I was attempting to look into, you know, maybe going back into that world, I couldn't find another equipment. It was, it was gone, right? So I went on this crazy ass, like, you know, wild, you know, goose hunt, man, looking for this and looking for that and, and literally like rebuilding shit, you know? And, uh, and my son busted me who I was in prison with. Right, right, right. No, because we're, 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 we're forward. I, I, oh, yeah. I, I kind of want to back this up. Let's back up. I, I want to back up because l- l- let's, let's go back to, I think it was Chicago, yeah. And in Chicago, you got into trouble, and you needed an adult to yeah. come look for you. Yeah. And your mom couldn't get there. No, nah, she was working as a waitress at Ed Snack Shop. She's and, back to normal. She's yeah. she's working. So she go through her stints, you know? Right. Like, you know, she go through her moments. Right. She's off her But you, you got in trouble for what? Stealing a car. Yeah. Okay, so you stole the car. Yeah. Now you need an adult to get you get out. You out. Your yeah. mom couldn't make it. Yeah. So who? She sets one of her friends up, an Italian guy from the neighborhood. Italian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. Italian guy comes yeah. and picks you up, and he's yeah. already seen you in the neighborhood. Yeah, you know, yeah, he knows. And, me. and he yeah. figures out you. you he's the, you, he's he's kind of almost disappointed you stole a car. That's exactly what it was. Okay. Yeah. But like, let, let's exactly let's start right there because yeah, that's yeah. like the beginning. You know, when he when he first brought me into his world of printing money, it was uh fascinating for sure as a kid right but through those it was it wasn't a long time you know it happened only was probably for like a year nine months to a year that i got to spend with him before he disappeared and during that time it was so much more than watching this master print money it was him teaching me 
things. Again, where I came back to said, since I've been out of prison, I've had good men in my life to show me things. So Dis- discipline, discipline, organization. Yeah, persistence. Like you know? like the the changing, you had to change the serial numbers on oh, each yeah, thing. Every- like you had to tape. Like well, he didn't do that. Yeah. He didn't do it like I did it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, see, when I was but learning, he's still, okay. When I was learning with him, like he changed the serial numbers, but it might have been like nine or twelve, right? Because you got to change the plate every time you change the numbers, right? You only could do three at a time, right? So, and with plates, it's re- it's complicated, man. You got the inks and everything. So, a lot of counterfeiters aren't really interested in changing the serial numbers when you're doing a full offset press run. Now. So he was doing the 85, which was an old note, right? Didn't have the watermark, didn't have none of that stuff, right? When he disappeared later on down, when the 1996 note came out, that's when I got active That's again. when you got mastered. That's when you mastered it. Yeah, and I took so, the things he taught that I watched from him, you know, the plates, the inks. What year was that? That was, man, that was like, Probably like 89, 90, okay. so, 89, somewhere, 87. And then 96, I 96. think everybody remembers. Yeah, the big They, they changed that, yeah. that $100 bill. Was for about big. five years, I was just a, uh, I was just a rough rat, man. I was just, I was an alley cat, man, you know, yeah. on the south side, right? And when I left Chicago, I left Chicago when I was like 20, 21. To Texas, right? To Texas, and went down there, and that's where, that's when the '96 came out, and that's when I started to get back into it. But um, so so, and then just just for the listeners, the, so the '96 uh, in 1996, the U.S. federal government released a new bill, and this is where it was, you know, the the metallic or the shifted ink, the shifted ink, ink the, the, the watermark, s- new watermarks were the double face with the pen. This was like. Their way of saying nobody can make this. Exactly. And you were like, challenge accepted. Yeah. And I was challenge <laughs> You're like, challenge accepted. Let's do this shit. And then, yeah. and then you had your, you, you had your girl. My girl, she was brilliant. Yeah, you had your girl. Yeah. And, and, and she was like, let's fucking do this. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's when you guys start. So when you, when you take a project like this, the first thing you start off with is the paper, right? Yeah. So what, that, and I know the story of the paper, but it's, it's just so fucking great. So yeah. yeah. What, how, how did you guys? So when we, when we started, you know, the first thing I knew is you had to get that paper to mark because everyone was using the pen. Yeah. Right. That was the thing. That was the thing. No, they especially, didn't even look at it. Especially then because we, we didn't have the machines, the machines to like fucking yeah, scan yeah, it or anything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And, that was and the only. And even the machines, even those early machines they did have, you could break them. Right? Yeah. You could pass them, you know. So we're, we're looking for the paper. We're ordering paper from everywhere, man. I mean, we're just. And back then it was yellow pages. Right. You didn't have the, the internet wasn't like super big. It was more like university shit, you know? And so, um, in some universities, yeah, not even yeah, everywhere yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were, so we were just looking for the paper. Finally, we couldn't, you know, nothing was marking, nothing was working. So you guys ordered all over the place. Oh, for real, I probably ordered every freaking piece of paper on the planet. <laughs> for real, sample paper. Did you guys call, uh, was, was it all in the United States you were ordering? No, nah, we were ordering stuff countries? from Canada, from Germany, from, I'm t- man, bro, like everywhere. everywhere in the world. Wherever they made paper, we wanted to know what their sample was. Yeah. You know? And we'd call one place, they'd give us the number to another one, and it just kind of was like, do, 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 yeah. you know? And, and no uh, luck. You couldn't. No, nah, f- nothing. Nothing. All <laughs> negative, 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 right? I even was getting crazy, man. Like, I was even taking paper and dipping in acids and shit. Man, I never told him on that shit, but yeah. <laughs> like, I would start the house on fire, man. You know, don't put acid in aluminum. Don't touch <laughs> acid, period. <laughs> Fuck and acid. Then, yeah. And don't think that you can put paper in it, you know? Yeah. Crazy shit, man. It, it I was chemi- doing, dude, I was on some nutty stuff. I was trying to figure out how to make paper. And but just, you were desperate. Challenge desperate. accepted. Wanted You're to like, get it. Yeah. It just didn't matter. All, all, you know. And uh, and then she was, you know, she started screaming at me, you know, waving the phone book at me. And she slams it down. And she goes, not one piece, Mark. Nothing, she's Mark. She's pissed, man. Pissed. Super pissed. pissed. Oh, yeah. No, she's she's out of control. And, uh, and bam, she marked it. And it fucking marked yellow. The fucking uh, phone book? Yeah. Yellow. It marked Fuck. perfect. Now, where it got interesting is, is not only did it mark yellow, but it was so thin 
If you remember, th- phone book paper was yeah, very thin, yeah. right? I got the idea. I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe we could put two of these together and put the watermark and the strip in between. Mm, that's, I got it. That's how you put the strip and say, got yeah. it. And then it, and it worked. It took a minute to figure it out. So right. you, you just ripped the pages off that book right there. Well, no, 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 no. no, no then no, no, you no, acquired. Then we went and got that. That was a whole nother situation. We found where they where they printed yellow books. She'd go over there, pretend like she's a teacher. She wanted to do a project. This is what was so amazing, though. We come to find out at that time, directory paper was the most was 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 the most. It was a commodity, right? And it was the most produced paper product on the planet directory paper so money right and it was the cheapest you could get it super cheap right so money which is the most powerful instrument was was being made with the, the paper that is Mostly. most abundant but nobody knew but nobody knew so bizarre right so bizarre especially the printing companies doing yeah. those directories yeah, they yeah, have yeah, ink. Yeah, they have yeah, everything yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah so and then it went from you know we, I learned that the, the digital printing at the time, which didn't have none of the shit that it has now, right? Matter of fact, I'm, I'm most definitely probably one of the reasons why all the security features are on, are on computers and, 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 and digital printers. Matter of fact, what I've seen happen is... Is, is there digital security in printers? There is now. Yeah, even really? in the computer. If you if you try to print money off your computer, man, the secret service gets notified immediately, All right? So everything's watched now. Everything you know, j- just try to scan a hundred dollar bill and see what happens, right? So a little thing's gonna pop up now. You used know, to not be like that, but yeah. it, before you probably remember a long time ago, you used to be able to go buy your software and you, you would put it into your computer, and then you could yeah. work all. You didn't have to be online to work. You had the software in there. When I got out this time, when I was looking to, you know, possibly do something again, I was blown away by how technology had evolved and how, like, even now, you know, if you want to use your Microsoft Windows or whatever, you had to be online and you had to get the updates. Yeah. Right. So you see those updates all the time. And, and, that and would, they got your serial number. They got, they got your yeah, IP yeah, you address. Just, yeah, there's nothing you can do now. Yeah, there's nothing you can do now, right? And so a lot of that came from when I, when people who were breaking the law, I'm sure there were more than just myself who was using technology back then. But the Secret Service for sure had implementations in it into the, new, into the stuff now, which I even think caused technology to, to, to evolve into where everything's hooked up now. Because before you could have your computer and it was your computer. Yeah, and you just can work like offline. Back in, yeah, work offline. Just back in the day, you had Primeco, and it was your phone. What was Primeco? You don't remember Primeco? Oh no, man! Oh man, that was great, oh. man. It was only 80, yeah. <laughs> what was Prime, Primeco? It was a you know cell phone. Cell phone, man. Primeco. I remember Primeco. Primeco, man. It was like I, me- the I early remember. One. I remember the McDonald's fucking yeah. Nokia phone. Yeah, the like Nokia twenty dollar yeah, yeah, donation. Yeah. We're going even before that, man. Yeah. Primeco was like you know, and but you you it was your phone. Yeah. You know, now everything is, you know, constant update, constant update, constant update, constantly invasion, you know. So the, the game is dead now, you know. I mean, and it's going to be dead anyway because crypto and digital is about to take over and, you know, currency. People don't believe me when I tell them, but currency is about to be gone. Yeah. For sure. It only makes sense, no, especially I, with all the stuff going on in Russia and Ukraine oh, yeah. and China's like, yeah, what? And you're going to yeah. pull out Starbucks and yeah, what? The American yeah. dollar? Okay, let's change this let's shit. Change it. It's like, about to all change, man. And then they're going to reset the debt. Watch what I tell you. That's why they don't care about spending money right now. Yeah. 30 trillion, right? Yeah, I know. LA right now, just, I just read an article. They're going to spend 900, mil- 900 million to build a metro to LAX. This makes me wonder where they get this money at, man. You know? Nine hundred million to build a metro. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but, but when the when when the re, it's going to be, I do believe that when the digital takes over, you're going to see a complete reset. You know, but uh, is that safe, man? You know, the world's going to split. You know, you're going to see China and Russia have one side of the world. You're going to see America. Yeah, but this digital currency, because because we're we're talking about like. In a perfect what world, scares the shit out of me. as long as we have electricity, we're good. But like, what if we like lose all 
our power. Like I know it sounds crazy, but well, for does me, it? for me, it doesn't sound crazy because I thought I wouldn't see a pandemic in the country lockdown. Yeah. I thought I wouldn't see the whole country riot. Right? I I thought I wouldn't see some of the things I've just seen in the past couple of years. Yeah. So I I mean we went right from a pandemic to a war. Right. So so humanity hasn't really had any rest at all. Right. Our minds have been consumed with with tragic things, man, nonstop. You know, that's what I find tragic in the world right now. You know, and and, and as an artist who's an empath, like I feel things. Right. The, art, the, the world feels broken, man. You know, and it, a lot of it has to do with the agendas, man. You know, and those agendas aren't peaceful right now, unfortunately. Right. So when when the digital happens, what gets me concerned about it is programmable currency, they call it. Right. To where it's kind of like what people use with their the little, I don't know, was it EBT cards or whatever? Uh, Welfare, yeah, like the, food yeah, stamps, the food stamps. Is that what it's called? Whatever, e- EBT. EBT, something like that. Electric so it's programmable. Benefit. That's 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 a, a form of programmable currency, right? Yeah. They could only buy certain things with that card, right? That's what's going to happen, right? That's what that that's what gets me nervous about. That's what has me nervous about digital currency right now. Is when the when the when the Fed issues their digital dollar. But it's programmable, which means that, hey, maybe they don't want you buying a handgun no more. Okay, boop. Mm. Now you can't buy shit, right? Maybe they won't. No, you, nope, cigarettes are gone. Now you can't buy cigarettes, you know? Or say cigarettes are legal in California, but they're, they're, say they're illegal in California, but legal in Texas, right? So in Texas, you could buy cigarettes, but as soon as you cross the line in California, you, your money don't work. That's what's scary. That's fucking wild. Right? And that's what's going to happen. I never even thought of that. Oh, yeah. It's, that's, just that's look up psych- pro- Yeah. Programmable currency to me is the, is the absolute form of tyranny. <clears throat> right? Because right now, you have, you know, there could be somewhat privacy. Not really much anymore because people mostly use Zelly and Venmo and stuff like that. Right? Uh, but you still have cash. Right? So if I want to give you $100, I... Go give you hundred dollars. Nah, people just do Vimo now, right? Yeah. But there was a time when you could just give someone some money. Well, they said, "Well, what you hiding?" Well, may- maybe I I don't want someone to know that I I bought something. Yeah. Right. It's not about hiding. It's just you know I learned that when people know what you have, they tend to want it. Right. So for me, the programmable thing is like you look what happened up in Canada, man. When those truckers protested, whether you believe in it or not, who cares, right? I'm just saying the protest. And it was, no one got killed. No one, there was no bombs blown up. They were just protesting a vaccine, right? What, what, what was that protest? The uh, vaccine mandate. The truckers didn't want, didn't want to do they it. They didn't want to do a vaccine mandate. Right. But that's not what got me nervous about it, right? Whether what side you're on, pro, no, whatever, you know? What, what's, what, what got me nervous is what happened afterwards, you know, there was a waitress who donated fifty dollars to the trucker that was working in, in the town, and they seized her account and froze it. Mm. Right? This is a waitress with three kids, right? It was on the news for like one day, then it vanished, right? But what got me nervous about that? I said, "Damn, if they could freeze a waitress's money, man, they could freeze anyone's money, right?" And then. You started to see with the whole war where there's season, season, season. It's almost like they're getting people accustomed to hearing sanctioned, seized assets, right? That's what programmable currency will allow, right? If you ain't doing the right. Immediately. Immediately. Just a press of a button, man. Yeah. And yeah, that, it kind of happens now with credit cards. Oh, like yeah. Like somebody's fucking around. They're like, shut the credit shut cards it off. Like, well, even it. if not, I've had my account shut down for not doing just because I try to buy something. So... You know, what do you mean you try to buy something? I try to buy something big for a couple grand and they locked it up. You know, I had to mm. do all the calling, and I, you know, so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, everybody's so I mean, been through, yeah, that's yeah everyone's been through it, right? But imagine you go through it and you can't unlock it, which that happens too, yeah, <laughs> fucking right. Yeah. So for me, man, I think that you know, uh, of course, the government has the right to know, you know, they, they have a, a certain level to understand what you're, what you're making, right? But now everything that you spend is going into an algorithm. Yeah. Right. 
So even like we could have our phones on, man. We could start talking about something, and that ad will pop up on it. God, that's a fucking trip. Well, it's it's that is an invasion of privacy that hasn't yeah. been checked because there's been no public debate on social platforms. Yeah. See, what's happening is technology is outperforming us, right? Um, whether it's currency or even AI now, they're saying AI is now creating new AI. <laughs> That's wild, right? So something that we created is now on its own, creating own, its own AI. I just read the article about it a couple days yeah, ago. Yeah, I, re- I read about that a while back. It's wild. Yeah, or there's certain things that are so complex that we can't do that we can teach something to program it, and exactly. it is continuously it's doing continuously it doing at it. a rate that we don't even comprehend. We don't even comprehend. We don't even know what's happening. Like what the yeah, right? We don't know what the bag agenda is. And so for me, you know, but it, it, like I said, man, we're getting way off into this crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this stuff. yeah. No, no. Yeah, let, yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah, jump yeah. back. Let's jump back. Yeah. Let's go back to. She slams the, slams the yellow the page book, book man, yeah. marks it, and it's fucking it's yellow. yellow. Yeah, dog. Because it it's true. usually brown or something. Brown, black, black or like brown. brownish black, you know. And so it's yellow. So yeah. now what's the next step? So Once and, then that, you, and then it's so thin. We could, yeah, so it basically, it, 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 it solved a bunch of problems. The watermark, right. the strip, and the pen. And right. then I got real creative. When well, I the put, watermark, I, and again, I, I know you've, you've probably just had this conversation multiple times but the the watermark is is a a special paint that they added in 1996 that you had to find out yeah how how to to well that's the little thing on the bottom that little thing yeah yeah Yeah. on on the on the right bottom corner so you were like how the fuck do you do this it's car paint yeah. House of Color. Yeah. Right out here, but, dog. But <laughs> <laughs> right here, you know, Remember, like, I'm going to publish this, man. Yeah, yeah, right out here, dog. Uh, so, but how, but, but, so the way you came up on that was uh, you were walking down the street yeah, and uh-huh. you saw a car. Car, yeah, it's cool, man. And yeah. you're like, and it had that metallic purple, yeah. greenish. Yeah. And, and then you, went and hunted that down, you know. It was all, you know, for me, like I said, when the beginning you asked me what, when I, it's just curious, a curious creator. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm going to start introducing myself, a curious creator, because just always curious. And the curious. Curious creator. I'm I'm going to put that on the main title. Go ahead and listen. I like that. Because, you know, that's what starts experimentation to be curious and to say, oh man, how can I do this? And then what I used to, I think when I look back at it, I think the one thing that fascinated me the most about the, the, the journey when I was printing money was how I used things that no one would have ever used to make it. Yeah. Car paint, directory paper, you know, like just things just so, so like obvious. common yeah, and like- obvious. Yet I was able to take those things and mix them together and then create something, an instrument that I could use, you know? And I, and I do that now with my art, right? Same thing. My art. I'm always experimenting with new things, with new canvases, with new materials, with, you know, uh, you know, so it's just, it's, it's just taking that, you know, that curiosity, man, and just in applying it to some, how, how do you think you kept that? And, and what I mean by that is, um, we naturally are like that as children, mm-hmm. as children, we're like, yeah. What if I use a red mark on the yeah. floor and what yeah. and what this texture on my mama's couch? But they're just experimenting, you know. Yeah. What if I grab the sand and throw it in the bed and yeah. and, and and it's 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 a beautiful thing, it, especially if you you start accepting it and you let your kid like experiment. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, we're in a society like, no, you can't do that. And yeah. what did you do to my couch? And what did you do to the walls? And we're in this society that's that's just so, especially like the eighties, nineties. Oh, yeah, like yeah. you know, I, yeah. I, I you know, being children back then was like difficult. Yeah. What What do you think? Because like, I, I mean this in a great way. Yeah. But your curiosity, it sounds like that child's innocent mind yeah, of like, so. like you, it doesn't I'm seem a like a big old kid, bro. Yeah, you know it's, it's, like, not, <laughs> it's not like you were like, like, I'm going to fuck over yeah. the world. I need nah, money and get my nah, gang big and fuck. Nah. No, you were like, fuck just, it. I, what, 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 why? Yeah. Why does that work? How does I, that happen? Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you still have that? You know, I mean. And what makes you that way? <sighs> you know, I, I think growing up and I think growing up hard, right? you know, I grew up really hard and it's so my escape was my imagination. I always had a real vivid imagination when I was young, right? When my mom would go into her mental state, when my dad left, 
when my friends got killed, whatever it might have been that was real hard, nine months in a single cell, right? I would let my mind just go, and, and, it, and it kept me safe, right? It would take me to places that were imaginary, but were safe for me at that time, you know? And so I, like, even, even when I, I was, so I think, like I said, I think just childhood and just the tough things in my imagination keeping me safe allows me to, to still see, like I tell people, I, st- I stop and smell a flower, man. I, I look up all the time. I'm always looking up, right? I told someone yesterday, I said, you know, how many times you've been di- driving down the road and you've seen something that really dazzled you and you're like, wow, that's really cool, but you kept going. I stop. Always. But I, so I told I said, stop. The next time that happens, don't keep going. Even if you're in a rush, force yourself to stop and go find out what just dazzled you. Right. So so I think being in this state of mind for for so long, it's like a habit. Yeah. You know, you think positive. But 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 how, how did you maintain that? Because like I said, society's going to be like, don't stop. Go to work. Don't stop. Do this. Yeah. Hey, stop thinking. Yeah. Stop wondering why. Well, Just fucking do your job. I was a criminal, so I didn't listen well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I. How many years? Yeah. This yeah. is a weird question. How many years? Did you actually work Gosh. Like for somebody, like under somebody? Like what like percentage? Two years, say? like in your whole life, two yeah, years. Two years. Yeah. So you did the you did the mopping thing, the mopping, the transport, and the liquor. And that was it. And that was it. Yeah. So th- so that's why you you didn't have that employee, and you have to be at work oh. at this time. You have to yeah. be out at that time. And yeah. What about schooling? Didn't graduate, but I've read a thousand books. You know, I probably yeah. read, you know I've read a lot of books. Read probably ten thousand magazines. What grade did you get that, get up to? Uh, ninth got kicked ninth out. Grade. There was a riot. Fights. Yeah, yeah. A couple friends got stabbed. They kicked us out. My school was rough. It was like some straight up shit from the. You I see mean, on the it, movies, man. It, it, Kelly it, High School was no chump back then, man. The gangs. You had gangs on every floor. Some wild shit, man. You know, and um. I got double promoted, though. That's what happened to me. I was actually in seventh grade in the, in the beginning, and they made me take some tests, and they said, man, you don't belong in here. You need to – they want to put me in high school, like 12.9 on everything or something. Yeah. So they threw me in high school, and I had just – we had just moved from the suburbs, you know, and, and to, to the south side, and now you throw me in a Chicago high school. I was little, man. I was a little skinny white dude, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but I had great, I, <laughs> yeah, but I had good friends Crazy. though, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But it was gangs, you know, and they were my family. That's who that I wrote with. to more problems too. Oh, it did lead to more problems, all kinds of problems, you know, but, uh, yeah, man, the school was wild. It was a wild place, man. Tough times, you know, but. Schools are difficult, man. Even now, even now, it's just what happened, now. man. With that, crazy especially shit. with that whole social media thing and the fucking bullying and then the well, shootings. Well, you know what? It's speaking of that. I, 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 I again, public debate, right? Yeah. Social social platforms. There hasn't been real no stu- There hasn't been no serious studies on it. I mean, they're starting to now, right? But I, I, I truly believe, especially with the way that the algorithms work. That you could you could literally program a person. Now, people think that's crazy, but we see it happen all the time with somebody. If you put three people in a room, one who watches CNN all day long, one who watches Fox News all day long, and then one who probably just kind of strolls through it, right? You will see a difference in their attitudes. Yeah, of course. Right. This one will be hyper sensitive to things. Ask them how many hours a day do you watch CNN? I know some people that keep that shit on all day long, man. Yeah. And then have a conversation with them. And it's almost as if they're telling you and talking to you about things that they just listen to all fucking day long. Yeah. And it's on both sides. It's just feeding them. Of course. It's just feeding them. So I, yeah. So I believe that there's ways to program people by, influence them and we see it with marketing right you see right. a red red on the commercial red 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 there's a reason they're doing that yeah 
right? So it's well, like the old head. school in the movies, you know, somebody would smoke a cigarette yeah. and there'd be a sign that says yeah, smoking. Smoke, and you're yeah. like, oh, fucking smoke. Yeah. So, so how, to think that they're not doing that with social media, no, we know course. they're doing it. Of course. We know they're doing yeah. it. We know, I know when I pop open my feed, they're sending me things that they think that I'm going to like yeah. and then they could feed. Hey, you open up my feet. I got a bunch of motorcycles. Yeah. Motorcycles, yeah. guns, guns, yeah, motorcycles. Yeah. motorcycles. Yeah. What the fuck are they? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you started reading a bunch of stuff on, you know, shootings and stuff like that, you'll that start. Shit pops that up. shit's going to yeah. pop up. So, whoever, you know, whoever's the gatekeeper of this shit, you know, they, they have to be more careful, right? Because humans are so susceptible to things. And we haven't really, I don't think, even close. We've, we don't. Again, technology is outperforming humanity right now. We totally see that happening, right? With everything. With cars, with AI, with social media, everything, right? I mean, you got to think about it. Just a hundred something years ago, we were riding horses, man. Yeah, there's this thing that... Um, like we were a, little, a, little, a little, a little older. Maybe a little older, but maybe 150 years. But there, years. there's a thing that goes, um, when cars came out... Yeah. Rich people had cars, poor people had horses. Yeah. Now, rich people have horses is, and poor is, people yeah, have cars. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing with food. This is like the first time in, in yeah. the existence of man that the poor are fat. Yeah. Well, the poor people are fat. That's never it's happened not, oh. ever. It's always the, the royal. It's yeah, always the, the royal that had access Everyone to Everyone thinks the food. queen looked beautiful. The queen, when she the, was plump. Yeah, there, there was a time. Yeah, Because like, it was so one. different. But yeah, now think yeah. about that, man. It's the first time. Yeah. Like and then what's really bizarre, the amount of food that's available too. Think about this though. Even more bizarre is we have so much food on this planet yet a quarter of it is starving. Is it a quarter? It's a lot. It's I high. would say it's like a third. No, is it third? Is it it's higher? It's like a third that, that they're that are starving. Yeah. So think about that. We got. I, I don't know. I I wish I had somebody look that up. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it's like in that area, quarter, third, whatever. Yeah. There's a there's a chunk of population in this world who are. Don't have food. Don't have food. Yeah. So that, and yet we have all these resources. So it just shows you the imbalance in the world today, man. Just yeah. everything. And there's a lot of imbalance, you know, and, and, uh, you know, that that's the thing that I love about art. Right. Like right now I'm getting ready to do some new collections. Right. I've been professional artist for six years now. Everything is connected to money. I still get to to make money, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I love it, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> still get to do what I love, right? And but it's starting to. T- I'm starting to see my art take a change, right? I, I want I want it to um, document this time of history, right? That's what that's what the artist is for, right? The, and and I don't mean just artist painter, but rather it's the musician, the actress, the right. actor, the uh, the artist, man. You the publisher, whatever, right? Yeah. So I, I'm I'm hoping that there's that thousand years of creation, right? The next the next thousand years is of, of of peace and creation and harmony, right? The new Renaissance, I call it, you know, where the 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 people who truly care about creation are the ones who are tending creation. You know, right now it's tyrants and military and all, you know. In, in, in certain individuals, you know, but I do believe that there will be a change of guard, right? That 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 people who truly love people will be ruling over those people. Yeah, that's what humanity's been missing. You know, you know the leaders, regardless of who they are, you know, they tend to show an interest in their own lives, and and it's it's natural human instinct. So I'm not going to fault them for it. But I do think that our minds will evolve enough, hopefully, through art, through expression, that we have that moment, man, where where humanity actually reigns in peace with the earth, you know, rather than just trampling on it. You know, that's what art is for me, anyway. That, that, that's the expression that you're delivering through yeah. your art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. Now, is there? I'm going to jump back, and then I want to go back to the art, but. Um, so you started to make pretty money. You figured yeah, it out. Figured it out. And then you were doing this for Man, a long time. Almost gosh, ten years. I mean it's been just printing money. Printing money, spending it, traveling. Now, now I, I get what you do with the personal aspect of the money you keep, right? You know, like spend it, travel, buy shit. 
whatever. But do you sell money? Could, or do people sell money? Like, answer this however you want to answer. But oh, no, they sell yeah. it. I've sold plenty, man. You know, yeah. I sold a lot of it. You know, just like, uh, what's that, the, that's what's actually, the rate. Like, you know, I was like, getting 30 cents on a dollar. Right? You were getting 30 my, cents? My money well, was what's really, the point? Well, I guess. Well, if you, I walk in with 100000 you give me 30 cash, right? You were I, happy with that? Yeah, because that was the real. That's what yeah. I wanted, you know? Because my money, I never used it. 30%. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's good. But I never use my money for personal things like yeah. rent or or payments or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Um I didn't like giving it to, I didn't like to people you knew you would see again. No. Yeah. Or even, you know, even even family members. Yeah. You, know? you, know, you if somebody wanted something I'd want to give them the real, right? I wanted to keep it as is less connected to me as possible. Yeah. Right? I didn't even like spending it in the same town that I lived in. You'd that was like a no no. Yeah, yeah, that was like a no no. You know, you, the the key was the the to, the least. Uh, the, the the the. I didn't want people to know what I was doing. I was a ghost, man. Yeah, it wasn't like that. Shit was like you know broadcasted, man. You know, I I dealt. You were with low key. You were real low key. key. Even now, you know, I stay low key. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, it's super low key back then. But when with, I started with your, with your artwork now and stuff like that, like yeah, I still I still don't blast it out there. I don't I don't yeah. sell it online. You know, it's it's still kind of a, a personal thing. You got to get you know get near me to get it. You know, which can be shitty sometimes. You know, because yeah. you want to sell it, but you just I've learned to, to sit back, right, and wait for that moment. And it was the same way with the money. When the money was ready, I'd bring it. I mean, the selling of the money is when things started to like go. How do you find people for that too? Like, did you well, really see, have for me? Or? So for me, I used to play ball a lot, basketball, and I was I'd go play ball in in uh, Ukrainian village. I'd go play ball on the south side with the brothers. Man, I'd go I'd go into Pilsen and play with, with the Hispanics. Man, I went everywhere to play. Yeah, you know, uh, I I I I. I wasn't, even though Chicago was really racially divided, I had friends from all the different neighborhoods, Yeah, you know, and, uh, and I played ball with them, you know, and years later when I went back to Chicago. So when you went to Texas. Yeah, I started doing my then thing. Then you went back. Okay, you figured it out in Texas. Figured it out in Texas, back. then went back to Chicago after a little run through the country, you know, decided I was tired of traveling. I was tired of spending money. I was tired. Of, you, know, you get tired of it, actually. Yeah. It's crazy, you know? I mean, the very beginning, you're spending and you're buying for yourself, right? And before long, you got so many shoes and pay. It's like, okay. It, and then you, you're traveling with a trunk load of merch, right? So, you know, if you get pulled over, they're going to see this trunk load. There and, and then you got cash, fives, tens, ones, right? So then I devised a system. I said, man, we're, Why, why'd you have five, ten, ones? Because you're, you're cracking a hundo, right? You're cracking a so, hundred. So you're cracking the hundo. So you'd go yeah. crack it. So that'd yeah. be your change and that'd stuff. That'd be a change. Money. So you get a 50 got it, got it, got it, got it. or, you know, 70 You never back. made anything under $100. That's just, I mean, it, there was times I I played around with, with other denominations to learn shit to get yeah. to the hundred. But when I when I had once my you crack that. when I once I cracked that that was it was just a hundred. Why the fuck? Why would I, I do time? anything else? That's yeah, stupid. Right, right, right. And so, so the the beginning of it was just going and spending, hit a mall, you know, rock that mall, get things. Then then it went to the the phase of buying things for your friends and family. And and then that even that got old, right? And then yeah. people started to expect it. Yeah, because people don't appreciate it anymore. Yeah, they don't now appreciate they expect, when you yeah. give it. Yeah, when you give something away. It, it's not as appreciative as when someone earns it. Right. Right. And so we got away from that. And that's when we started fucking disgusting. Huh? That, that, that mentality, that yeah, human nature, man, human, human nature is an interesting thing, man. You know? And then the next thing was we just bought things for kids. And that's, that was the, the purest of the crime. Right. Some people say, Oh, you did it to justify. No, I really love buying shit for kids, man. Yeah, I really love that. I grew up in Salvation Army. We were in Salvation Army, man. I, if I could help a kid that was sitting there get something real nice, man, that should, it'll make his day. And so we went on a, you know, Robin Hood journey, man, just doing that. And and then that got old, right? All the traveling, all the movement, you know. Even though I was hiking and climbing, because I'm a big outdoors guy, love to hike, love yeah. to, to, you know. 
And uh, and then that's when I went into, okay, let's go back to Chicago. Started hooking up with people that I grew up with, I used to play ball with. Now these dudes, they're in their own criminal element. So I reached the top really quick. Even now, I always reach the top fast. Man. You know, I don't know what it is, regardless of what I'm doing. Bless, I meet, man. Yeah, I meet the, yeah, just I meet the people. You know, yeah. I meet the people that are needed for me to do what I where where I'm trying to go, right? Yeah. And and so right away, you know, I grew up in a gangster neighborhood. You know, all my friends, their fathers or cousins or something, you know, everyone was connected in some way. And so then I started selling money, and that's when things started getting out of control. Right? That's when that's when, you know, the money was coming in in a manner to where it was almost like water. Yeah. You know? And again, it comes like back to fucking open faucet. Just <laughs> pouring out, man. You know? You're burying the shit. You're doing all kinds of shit with it. You know? I probably still got money buried out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With my yeah. own, uh, treasury raffle one day, you know? But, you know, I mean, it just... Well, you were burying it? Oh, hell yeah. Because what are you going to do with it? Put it in your wall? Put it in your bed? No, of course, yeah. You know I mean... Especially back then. Back like, then, yeah. You know, so it's just like money becomes ah man, it just it doesn't feel real again. Yeah, that that where I come back where shit just don't feel real sometimes, where everything's just fake. You know, and uh, but life s- sputtered out of control, man. You know, young with that type of you know grew up poor, right? And um, and that's when my problems occurred, and that's when I ended up going to prison, and then. You know, now now part of the reason that you went to jail that that I that I had a little bit of an understanding was your your son, that and was your the dad. Second time. The that first was time. okay. The first time. The first time was with my pops. I got got into got and, into and your pops. You you mean your stepdad or no, your, my real dad? Your real dad. That, so you reconnected with. I reconnected with them like twenty two years later, man. And you forgave him. I forgave him, and then he he was in Alaska. Went up to mm. Alaska. That's fucking hard. That yeah, up. must have been yeah, difficult for him yeah, too. Yeah, and it was a trip, man. It's you know? funny because the episode before this was all about Alaska. Oh, I love it up there. Beautiful, yeah, man. yeah. You know, ended up going to Seward County Jail up there, man. Hell of a county jail, man. Man, My gosh, hellhole. Food's the worst food on the planet, man. Cold as fuck. I Cold, imagine. yeah. But uh, you know, I went up there, man, and and what do you know? My dad was growing weed. He was a weed grower. But before yeah. anyone was doing that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like nah, Alaska. Be everybody's fucking. Yeah, nah, like Northern Lights and shit like that back in the day. He was really doing it. And he took me to his little spot. He had he had some trailers built underground with this crazy ass mylar, you know, where they couldn't see the heat and he tapped into the electrical. So my dad was pretty brilliant himself, man. You know, he had so, his, so it's fucking genetic. Yeah, yeah. You know, criminal brilliance, right? So he shows me his, right? Takes me into this underground grow. And then so I, I show mine, you know? And I call it the gold fever, man. You know, anytime people would see the hundred and they'd look at it and hold it up and, man, this is fake. Called gold fever. Now all of a sudden they're like, damn, this dude can print this shit. And my dad did the same thing. And we ended up going to prison. He we, started print. He started well, he print. he got me going. I right. actually went up there to stop. Yeah, I was ready to quit, man. Yeah, but you saw fucking harvesting and weed and underground. Yeah. Alaska. And it was my dad. You know, <laughs> it's like you know, let's 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 ride. You know, and it was a disaster. We all went to prison. What happened? Ah, uh, you know, <sighs> on the first one. On the first one, I gave him some money. He gave it to his wife who hated me. And niece, he, that's the reason he took off. She hated me. She hated the fact that I found him. And now he was trying to, uh, he really loved me. He felt bad. I could tell he felt bad that he left, you know. The first situation we had when I went up there, he took me one day. He had like a sled dog, sled dogs. He loved sledding. Did I did a ride and all that shit? Yeah. And so when I went there, man, he had like shit, man. I don't know, forty dogs. He had uh, he had he had some acres out in Chickaloon. It was like four, 50 miles uh, west of Anchorage. And so one 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 uh, one morning we went into town to get dog food. 
And he and I'm helping him load this dog food up. And he paid for it. It was like 880 bucks, man. It was a lot of dog food. That's a lot of dog food. It was a lot of dog food, dog. Like that's I'm like talking extra about like 20 freaking bags, man. It was yeah. a lot. We were loading, right? Big 50-pound bags, man. Right. You know? And we're in the we're in the the truck. I'm like, man, them dogs eat a lot when we're driving back. And he's like, Yeah, that's what I spend every month. And I'm like, right away I'm thinking, damn, me and my brother and sister grew up with shit, man. And here like you've been nothing. feeding these dogs, man. Eight hundred a month. We could have lived great with eight hundred a month down in the projects, man. Yeah. And and I got pissed, man. I started screaming, yelling at him. He stopped the truck. I jumped out. It was right on the side of the Chickaloon River. I'll never forget, man. Because I was, I was, the way that river was rushing is how I felt inside with anger, man. I just wanted to just, I wanted to, I grabbed him, grabbed him around his throat, started ch- uh, strangling him. I finally let him go. And uh, it was just one of the moments, man. Yeah. Know? We never really re- recovered from that. You know, shortly after that, I ended up going back to Texas and the Secret Service came down on him because I had gave a bunch of the money to his wife or to him and he gave it to his wife and she had some people spending it. And it was a small town. Al- small Alaska, really? Man, they're like, they're not going to figure this out. Yeah, it's you like know? a fucking population. Of yeah. Nothing. And, and they figured it out and they ended up grabbing me. She she, she said, you know, turn me in, all that shit. Mm. My dad ended up going to prison for guns. He was a felon in possession of a firearm. He went to Sheridan, federal penitentiary. I went to Wasika. We started writing each other, man, and, you know, and trying to rekindle, you know, like, this, man, let's get this right when we get out. Man, so you, don't, you, you don't hold any grudges against anybody, right? Really. Anybody, man. I learned, you know, one of, one of the things I learned, so I got these gangster parables, man. I might do a collection of art, man, one day, just gangster parables, like nothing. Make good. an NFT collection. Yeah, or something, yeah. yeah, gangster parables, man. You know, well, even, even regular, but, like, nothing good happens after midnight, you know? Like, yeah. at 1159, already disappears, man. For real, I do, too. I don't. I'm real weird about certain things, you know, but, um, or see how, see how a man treats his woman and he'll treat you the same. Yeah. All right, go to dinner. Watch how he treats his wife. Does he show her respect. Does he treat her good? This is the woman he lays down next to. And I, I've literally walked away from people. I see you ever been in a dinner and act weird. So anyway, just yeah. different parables, you know? And, um, and so for me, me and my dad, we were talking about getting out. He ended up dying on the day I got out. He ended up dying the day you got out the Heart first time. The first time, yeah. So here we are getting to know each other. May he rest you know, in peace. Yeah. And the day I got out, man, he died of a heart attack. You know, it was a trip. It was a trip. What, was he still in jail at the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, he, he had, died in jail. Yeah, he died in jail, man. It was a tough one, you know. And then not even like a month later, my ex girl who I had a son with, she was a Chicago police officer. She drops... My kid was trying to make money at her house off her little printer. And she you're, right you're, you're, he was 17 at the time? Yeah, he was like, probably like 13 then, 14. 13, he's trying yeah, to print out money. money. But like, where did he get that idea from? Uh, like he knew? Know. or no, mean, But did he know? I mean, he didn't know, not then. But I mean, I was famous for printing. You yeah. Know? So he knew. So he knew that his yeah. dad was, a, you know, so he wanted to be like his dad. And, uh. And then I went on a three-year journey with that kid, man. And we went through all kinds of shit, you know. And when he was 16, I got locked back up for the money. Now, now that that's another one that I want to get clarification on. You guys uh, you guys had a big fight. Big one, yeah. You guys had a big fight. And all I know is that something about cops showed up, you guys are fighting, and there's money everywhere. There's money. Like, what, 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 what took place there? Well, me and him had been struggling, you know. Here I am trying to raise this kid. I'm still, I'm fresh out the joint. So I, I don't have my shit together, you know? And he, the one thing we connected with was music. He was really talented musically, man. You yeah. Know? And I was trying to get him into it. And one of my boys uh, knew Johnny K who produced Disturbed. And so I was getting him in one of the best studios, but it cost money. Shit wasn't cheap. They weren't doing it for free, you know? And it looked like he, this is before all the Mac Miller, all the r- white rappers. This is the only white rapper at the time was Eminem, 
you know. And, right. And, and my son, he had it, you know. Plus, he was from the streets. With, you know, his dad was me, you know, whatever. And we had all the right people around him. And so I started getting back into, you know, crime so I could pay for this thing. And and he knew. He knew what I was doing. And, and, and so there was a part of him that didn't mind. And then there was a part of him that kind of hated me for it because that's what took me from him. Yeah. And I think that's what caused him to just, he didn't want to do the music no more. And so I was actually out of town. I came in and, uh, and he, there he was with his friends printing, you know, $20 bills, bullshit. Ran outside. I kicked him out. I ran outside. We're fighting on the street. He throws them at me. The cops are there. Bam. You know. And that was it, man. And, and my, my indictment so you, literally is you, you, one paragraph. So here it is. All these years, man, doing this shit. Even the shit with my dad. And now it was kind of like the curse, right? My dad died on the day that I got out of prison. What a strange phenomenon. He leaves me for 22 years. And then we end up going to prison for the money that he wanted me to get back into, and he dies. Now here it is a few years later, and now the same thing, but it's with my son. You know, it, it just felt like a strange curse, you know. When you went to jail, they arrested your, your, your son. Well, they, 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 they picked him up. He was 15 at the time, I think 15 or 16. So he didn't go to jail. He didn't go to jail. But three years later, that you're serving time. I'm already gone. You're yeah. gone. You're I'm in gone. jail. Yeah, 105 months. Yeah. Been talking to him. Think he's doing good. He and hits 18. Boom. They grab. He had been printing money the whole time. They were just waiting for him to turn 18. Fuck. Yeah. But they put him in a different jail, right? Well, I was in. So, so I think my son saved my life. So where my dad died... I never left my children because I didn't want to be with them. My circumstances of surviving didn't allow me to be with them, you know, and going to prison. It wasn't that I chose to abandon them like yeah. my dad did. Um, and so for me, I think there was a blessing there because of that, you know, because when I was in Big Spring, so I had been down for a couple of years already. <laughs> They shot me over to Big Spring because of some riots, and it was an old Air Force base, real shithole, sewage. I mean, people would be just blown away if they seen how some of these prisons are in this country, man, just far out shit. And people were always sick there because of the sewage that was, it was an old prison. There was lawsuits filed against the place, but, you know, that shit don't work. And then the pandemic, then this virus hits us, climatic pneumonia. It was an offshoot of the SARS or some shit. It was right in 09. And I got real sick, man. Like, real sick. Here I am, like, 230. Bench at 415. I'm a monster. 415, that's Oh, yeah. Kind of oh, actually, I was curling 225, bro, up against the wall. Bam. I mean, I was just a beast, man, you know? And then I get this sickness, man. I couldn't even. It, 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 I seriously thought I was going to die in prison like my dad. I went from. A monster to couldn't even do one push up. Couldn't even do one push up, man. And I kept trying to get a, a medical transfer out of there because the, the environment was killing me. You know? And they wouldn't do it, they wouldn't do it. And then when he got arrested, they sent him to Forest City, Arkansas. And out of nowhere, I get called down to the office and say, Hey, man, you're getting transferred to Forest City. I said, Huh? Or they didn't even tell me 4 C. They just said you're getting transferred to a medical facility. I knew my son was at 4 City. And I knew that was a medical facility. I'm like, man, I hope they sent me there. What do you know? That's where they sent me. I'll never forget it, bro. Because he looked like a baby. He was just 18. They sent me to 4 City, Arkansas. Man, I, 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 I'm in the, the holding facility. I just want to hit the yard, go find my boy. I know he's out here in this jungle, you know? And they put me, we don't get into the, the dorm till like 8 o'clock at night. And I remember taking all my shit to the bunk. The white dudes came up to me, man. Hey, you, you're Art Williams. I'm like, yeah. They're like, your son's here. 
I'm like, yeah, I know. I want to go find him tomorrow. They were like, no, he's here in this unit. I said, they put us in the same unit? He's like, yeah, he's in the TV room right now. I said, damn. Boom, I shot right to the TV room, bro. And it was such a, it was such a powerful moment because here I've been down three years. I hadn't seen him one time. Now here's my little dude, man, in prison. In the flesh. In the flesh. Because of me, right? Because of my shit. Yeah. Because I wasn't a good dad, you know? And I, I walked into that, I walked into that TV room, man, and the whole TV room went quiet. He was sitting on the front row. I'll never forget it. And I just broke down crying, man. And he did too. And he got up, he ran to me, hugged me. And here's what's so amazing is every man in that room was in tears. The hardest of men. Killers. Just in tears, man. Thinking of their son. Thinking of, like, damn, this dude's in jail with his son, man. And he was a baby. He was 18. Had a little baby face, man. And he was already, he was there for a month. And I believe the reason he they, they brought me there, because he had already got into a little trouble. He was holding cigarettes for someone. So already they were kind of, you know, and he didn't know. Seeing an issue. Seeing a problem. Seeing a problem. So to bring his dad. They knew I was no bullshit. And I was. I got there. I, hey, whoever's near my son, you, we about to get into some real shit here, man. Go near him again. And that was all that had to be said. It was over with. And we spent the next two and a half years together, man. Sellies. I got him working out. I got him in an underground boxing thing because they had underground boxing. You know, uh, I was painting. He was singing. He was singing in there. I really thought when he got out, he was going to do his music because he had a way to move people. I remember, man. So here we are. American Greed came out, and we were together in the room when American Greed aired. It was a documentary about me and my dad and shit and him, my son. And I remember watching it, man. I only watched it one time ever, and that was the first time in jail with him. The only time. The only time. I never watched it again. Even after I got out, you know, hell, I barely read the shit they write about me, man, you know, but we're watching it, man. When we left, man, because they showed him with some of his music, right? And he, his music was good. This is a long time ago. And, uh, and so some of the brothers came up to him later on his age. Hey man, you rap, man. You know, we do, uh, holiday concerts, man. Would you, would you get down with us? And, you know, in prison, it's real racially divided at the highest level, you know, and right. whites are the minority in there. And, you know, I've seen some real mistreatment shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, there, there can be some real harsh environments for white people in prison. You know, it's just different. It's just flipped, you know. So he came to me. He's like, man, dad, you know, should I do this or not? You know, are the, are the white dudes going to have problems? I said, listen, man, if you want to do it, you do it, and I'm behind you. That's all you need to know. And he's like, all right, I want to do it, man. And I remember, the, I remember, man, it was probably one of the coolest moments I had with my son. For the next three months, where he was getting ready for the concert, and he was working with some of the brothers down at the music room, and, and you never seen a white dude rap at – a prison holiday concert, concert, you know? But here he was, man. I remember him getting up there, and the whole prison was there watching, dude. Yeah. And he fucking rocked it. Killed. He killed it, man. You know? And he kept doing it. Every concert, man. And, like, I thought he was going to, he drives a trash truck now, you know what I'm saying? But he's been out nine years, too. He's doing good. Just bought his house, his first house, just had a baby. So proud of him. Congrats, he, man. he didn't ever go back. So you're a grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandpa just recently. And a dad. <laughs> I got dad. a baby and a grandbaby <laughs> at the same age. They're gonna be ri- yeah. is, he, is he in LA? Nah, he lives, he's in Chicago. He he's moved Chicago. to Dixon. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I got out a month after like him. Dad and a grandpa at the same fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's nuts, dog, right? But, um, wow. Yeah, man, so during that prison time, man, that's where I was painting. That's where I was dreaming and so his, his the thing was is he would do his music and and i would do the art 
and writing. That's how we were looking. And inventions. I got a bunch of inventions I'd like to do one day, you know. And uh, and we became best friends, man. I became a dad in prison, you know. I mean, I still have issues with some of my children down in Austin because I was out of their lives, and they just they just never, they, they didn't ever forgive me, even to this day, really, you know. You, you, you know what I was thinking about, stuff like that? It's it's interesting because, like, you know, you don't know your father. And the only thing you kind of know is, one, he's not there. And, two, your your mom's bad-mouthing him. You know, oh, like, yeah. he didn't do this, he didn't do this. Yeah. And, and there's something that I heard recently that I thought was pretty interesting. It's like, not all mothers are good and not all fathers are bad. Yeah. And it's it's a trip to run in like you actually run into your father late later mm-hmm. and, and you heard a different side of the story or yeah. you, you found out some new information or whatever the case is. Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of the situation you're in now where it's like, yeah, you you weren't involved with them, but yeah. then you have everything else that's a package and it just makes it so difficult. Like, Real difficult. You know? Like yeah, it, it, like it's it's like their fucking minds already decided. It is. And it, and when I got out, I went down there sometimes, flew them up, tried you know, tried everything, really tried everything. And just it got to the point, you know, I mean, now I have three babies with a beautiful woman. You know, she, I met her like a year and a half after I got out of prison. Sarah, just, she's, she's a North Korean and German. Her family escaped from North Korea. So she has North a Korean and German. Yeah. She's That's a tough mess. chick. And she was a national figure skater. That's more gangster than the uh, shit you've been yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> And her family, they escaped from North Korea. Right. Yeah. So her, her, yeah. So, yeah, she's a tough girl, man. You know, changed my life. You know, when I met her, you know, she's the one who, you know, got me to believe in me. You know, even now, I work really hard as an artist. You know, the social media, you sh- you, you know, mo- I mostly use it for my events and my art. Don't really put anything personal out there. Uh, but But there's a lot to the journey that people don't see, right? And when they only see good, they see, you know, the art, you know, they just assume, oh, man, he's, he's on top of the world, right? And it may seem like that, you know, but there's a lot of things behind that that are going on that I am dealing with so I can be there. Yeah, the layers. The layers, man, you know? And the art world Pop is real. Out. Yeah, and the art world is real scandalous, man. You know, you have, you know, for me... You know, I, I, you know, like I, being in prison and thinking, you know, a lot of people have prison dreams, right? Most people, you know, oh, I'm going to be a writer. You got people writing books in there. Oh, I'm going to be a real estate guy. Or I'm going to be in stocks or I'm going to be in this, you know. I was actually wanting to be a writer. I wrote a book, 700-page book called Kane's Dagger. It's about, uh, it's like Constantine and Da Vinci Code. It's about how the secret societies uh, uh, deal with, Supernatural secret societies, you know, like some mm. real heavy shit, man, right? It took me five Different years. dimensions. Oh, or something. way out. Yeah. It took me five years to write it. And during that five years of writing, I was painting, right? So my visual mind was being built through writing. And so I thought I was going to be a writer. I wanted to turn that book into a movie. I thought it'd be a badass movie. Did you publish it? I self-published it when I got out. And then I just kind of let it go, you know? And uh, I still, I, I want to break it into two. Right. I did that create space when I got out of prison. Oh, I'm a so, you know. Yeah. But then as I looked at when I got the book and I read it again, I was like, man, this needs to be two books, man. You know, I need to pull this down and redo it and do it right. It's a great story, you know. And um, but the writing didn't happen. Right. I self-published thinking people were going to go crazy for it. Nothing. Because it was such a big world. Right. That I didn't understand. And he stepped away from his music. So re- reality hit when I got out, right? Like life. Bills. Bills, man. Bills, rent. Everything, right? So to pursue a dream, like at 40, right, was like, man, you know? But tragedy always, in my life, in my life, tragedy has always led to beauty. You know, when my house, you know, even in the criminal world, man, she's screaming and yelling at me and we ended up finding the paper. Right. You know, like 
whenever I've, I've found myself to be at the very edge and at the lowest, like even when I was just about to go back into doing something bad this time, seven years ago, and my son busted me for, for something little that he's seen that he knew was a part of something. And, and I walked away from the situation. And I'm sitting in Lacuna Lofts in Chicago, which was an artist loft I had a studio in. And I'm sitting there and I gave up. I'm, I'm sitting there. I can't work. I can't even print money. I felt like a complete loser. Like, what, am, what is my worth? What can I do? And Joseph Cacciatore walks by. And he owned a place, big time dude in Chicago. And he offered me a job to, to be an intern artist for the building, help all artists. So there was actually a job I, I did have. But I didn't really consider that a real job because I was painting with artists. Yeah. From all over the world. It was like my. That's my like paying intern. for a university to yeah. practice painting and yeah. you were painting. It was great, you know? Yeah. That was my schooling. He was bringing in muralists from it's all like a over. Paid internship. Oh, it was the best, man. But he wanted to see me make it, man. And, he, and during that time, he he, I got to spend time with him, and he he taught me what it meant to be successful. The mindset, right? The discipline. You know, the 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 the. You know the the determination you have to have and the tenacity. Right. To get through shit, you know, and and as an artist, you would think like, you know, oh, you're a painter, man. That's that's easy shit, man. You know, trying to try to get art in a gallery without a manager and a publisher and all this shit. Right. A big gallery. It's impossible. The ones that, it's impossible. It's impossible. The big ones, you know, try. Even, everybody's painting. Everybody. like everybody's doing Every, something. Everyone. And, and worldwide. Worldwide. There's millions. It's like and there's it's, fucking good. There's a lot of good art. A lot of good art everywhere. So how do you separate yourself? How do you do that? You know, for me, you know, I had a good moment at, at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house about six years ago. I sold a lot of art. I saw, I saw yeah. that. And I took the money and I built a gallery. I the saw galleries that. wouldn't let me in? Well, fuck you then. I'll go build my own. Yeah. And I did, you know, and I, and I, and I kept that place. What was so crazy is right before the pandemic, you know, I was just getting ready to have that year, right? And I've heard a lot of people say this, that they were, they were like right at that edge of breakthrough, you know? And I was. I, was, I had the Hollywood flew out. They were going to document the whole year. I was dealing with um, a studio here, New Wave Entertainment, which is New Cell now. Uh, and... They were going to document my head. I was going to do a Fisher Foundation event, Rolls Royce. I was going to do Arnold's again. And then I was going to do Art Basel Miami. So I was going to do four events, and they were going to record the whole thing. And they're all fucking humongous, humongous events. events right? fucking and these are things that I got, you know, I was able to get on my own. Just hard work, man, showing up, being there, you know. I think my first year that I went professional artist, I did like 37 shows in that year. Mm. All over the country. Mm. I had a white van. I load that bitch up and phew, I'm out the door. Next, 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 next. I mean, that's how I live, man. Even now, I hadn't seen my kid in almost, I haven't seen my kids in, in, in like 10 days. You know, because we live, they, they live in St. George, my family, and then I have a place here. So I go back and forth. To be at the top of something, there's always going to be sacrifice. You know? And so, you know, I had my gallery for four years and it was just having anything in the pandemic hit. And I'm a barter, man. I trade shit all the time. So I've, I've traded paintings for a Porsche. I trade paintings, had trade paintings for this RV. So I had that RV sitting there. So we jumped in it and we headed to Texas, man, you know. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah. A Porsche and an RV. Yeah, yeah, that's what I had, dog. It was nuts down in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A. And then my boy had 100 acres, man. So we were like... <laughs> Done. The whole world's falling apart, and we're like in Crystal Clay Lake, I think, or some crazy fishing. It was insane, bro. I was like, man, fishing. Yeah, just chilling, and then hunting deer, and then we went back to Chicago in August, and uh, Sarah said, "Man, enough with the RV, dude. You know, we got two. At that time, we only had two kids, Da Vinci and Love. I think Love was like four months, and uh, and then I talked to some of my friends out in LA." 
I got really good people here. You know, even even you know my boy Matty O at New Cell, he he's a manager, you know, and he he's kind of helped been guiding me. He's a Hollywood dude though, you know. They're trying to get the movie made and all that. And my good friend, he's a writer. I got a couple writer friends. Ricky Funes, he's a uh, boxing trainer. Out Ten Goose Boxing out in Van Nuys. So I, I knew like only four or five people here, but they were good people, man. You know, solid, solid. And they were like, bro, you got to come out here, man. They're gonna open back up. And I was like, fuck it, man. I, I asked Sarah, I was like, you want to roll? She's like, yeah. You know, I don't want to stay in Chicago. And so damn, we drove across the country, man. To not an RV though. We got a suburban, man. We, you know, we drove to took our time. This is during the pandemic, wildfires, and what was crazy, it was like. Cause we got here September first, like the end of the world. The end man. of the world, it's fucking yeah, it was fires. Good. Fire. And this is what's nuts, dog. We're in Chicago. We're by my my girl's uh, family, and uh, and uh, her her friends' uh, stepdad or whatever. When we're getting ready to leave, he grabs me by the arm. He said, "Are you crazy? You're gonna take your wife and kids into L.A. where there's riots and fires and pandemics." You're going to fail. You're going to die. Damn near. Democrats. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, he's going crazy. He's like, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it. You can't do this. You can't take them. I, I pulled my arm off him. I said, man, don't tell me I'm going to fail. I don't want to hear that. I jumped in my car, drove away, and then Sarah met me. But I remember listening to him, man, like dry, like hearing his voice. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. And that made Haunting me even. You, yeah. it made, well, it made me more determined to succeed in L.A. L.A. is tough. Nice. Yeah, because nice. the challenge, it, it fueled you. It fueled me, man. Like, no, I'm not going to fail, and I didn't. What happened? I ended up opening a gallery in Beverly Hills for 10 months. Then I had a beautiful space on Melrose, you know. I ended up giving it up because the windows got shot out. Crazy shit. Some dude got killed in front of it. It was during that time, Melrose and La Cienega, real beautiful mm, area. When they were fucking attacking They were just ro- robbing everyone, right? My street, yeah. three robberies. Dude got shot behind the place. The cafe got shot. They were burning down buildings. Oh, it was nuts. It was Dude, fucking... I was just like, enough, you know? And um, In L.A., it's so fucking. But I'm still here, you know? I mean, that was in this. I had that place for like six months. I closed in December. and But my whole point was when coming to L.A., I didn't want to have a gallery no more. Mm. I, felt like, I felt like my art had earned the place to be in a Someone special else. place, yeah. right? And I always wanted that that representation, and I always wanted that 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 where I could just create, man. You know, not worry about selling it, not worry about this, not worry, just create it. You know. And so when I came out here, when I had my gallery in Beverly Hills, I met a lot of people when I was there, from producers to actors to gallery owners to everything. And and but it all seemed like. It all, but it was during the pandemic, and it just seemed like people were looking for something, but didn't really know what. And I was just kind of this new thing, you know. And when I closed my gallery in at Melrose, I started to think that maybe I didn't accomplish what I wanted when I was here, which is fine. I mean, the the truth is, L.A. and New York makes you, right? Breaks you. It can make you or break you. Yeah. You can either become the top or you could, you're out of here. Like millions of people that come millions. here. And so, and it, and just because I have a story and just because the art's cool and all that, that it hasn't made shit easier. You know, if anything, some people look a little bit different at it. They don't always look the same at it, you know, but now, you know, I've been working with someone, you know, yeah, right. For the past five months now, I started with, an NFT transformation of a physical collection, right? Took me months to work on that thing. Um, finally got it to a place where it was accepted. So, so, so I finally have somebody who could rep my art, but she told me right from jump, hey, this is going to be a year's process. You know, this ain't going to be no overnight thing. It's going to be built slowly so it lasts I mean, Bella blew my mind when I, the first time I had dinner with her. The way she shook my hand, the way she looked in my eyes, and the way she didn't bullshit me. And I knew I had the right person. I went to, I went to, uh, 
one of the high Croft gallery events at the Waldorf Astoria, probably like in February or something. Yeah, that setup was yeah, about spectacular, then. man. It was it was like it was where I seen this is where I wanted to be. Yeah. For the first time in my art career, I walked into something where I said, This is what mine has to be. And and it's in that and from that day forward, it's slowly getting there, right? You know, like right now, I'm in the process of creating a body of work for her. From the creation of the of of the NFTs, it changed my work. That's what's been amazing about LA. When I came out here, new materials, new people, new inspiration. You know, I had some space material from. Uh, That's Tom. some of the beauty of LA. Yeah, it's just like you know the the my experimenting, my curiosity in LA has allowed me to do metals, has allowed me to do NASA, you know, Thomas Zielinski, who works with Frank Gehry, gave me this crazy-ass material that molds, you know? That's actually what I'm working on right now. It's a material from Frank Gehry. They used it to build the Louis Vuitton store in Paris. I got the leftover material. That's fucking cool. Super badass. I sold one of those pieces for 100 grand at Arnold Schwarzenegger's. I didn't get the money and went to charity, but I got that documented 100 grand sale from that stuff, you know? So and you did that, you. and I did it, yeah, you know, and it helped all those children that piece of art, you know, and now I have I just got like fifty feet of it, but they told me that's it, it's done, no more, man, you're gone. So once I make that collection of art, that's it. But that's what's happened to me in L.A. It's allowed me, you know, to to create at a really high level, and then. Like I said, working with someone who could rep my art in a manner that that and me helped me become a better artist, a better, you know, um, creator. You know, so I, I, right now I'm real. This is a really exciting time right now for me. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I got a lot of cylinders working, man. You know, I'm doing some stuff with Scott Page, who played with Pink Floyd, and Jamie Wyland. She, uh, yeah. Scott Wyland's wife. I got some real rare photos. I got some Bob bonus photos from the Rolling Stones. It's um, coming together. Yeah, it's all starting to kind of click now, you know. And I, I got it's like my, all this shit I've been doing my whole life. What does it yeah, mean? What do I do with yeah, it? And now it's like it's all coming together <laughs> now, you know. And it's like so. It's going to be interesting, you know. In the next, uh, you know, if as long as the world sticks around and we don't blow ourselves up, you know, I think the next couple of years will be really cool for me, you know. And it's just a matter of um, just keep creating. Keep being curious, man. Keep, you know, just just keep jamming, man. It's like that expression, curiosity killed the cat. Satisfaction yeah. brought him back. Brought him back. I love That's it, right, dog. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in a few kill spots myself, yeah. man, you know. But, satisfaction. Uh, hey, satisfaction, baby. I'm here, man, you know. And, you know, so it, it's like, you know, the, the I hope, the reason I like doing these things, the podcasts and, and interviews because, you know, I, I something happened some years ago, man. I was on the streets of Chicago. Me and my boys, we were at the Parliament. It's a real, like, high-end club. And we were, we were club hopping. We had two limos that night. We were just kind of going around, having a good time. And I came out, and this kid, he was like 20, 21. He asked me for some change, right? And, and I'm with a group of guys. You know how group guys are, man. You know yeah. We're animals. We're waiting for our, for our cars to pull up, you know, so we could jump to the next spot. And uh, I said, man, are you, are you sick? And he looked at me. He's like, no. Nah. I said, you on drugs? He's like, no. Nah. I was like, man, you don't, look, you don't look hurt. You know, you're healthy, right? He's like, I said, why are you asking me for money right now? He said, what do you mean? I said, why are you asking me for money, man? You should be either working or at home going to school. Why are you here on the streets asking me for money? He said, well, you know, I, my, my parents wanted me to go to school, and I didn't want to go to school, and so they kicked me out, da 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 I said, I said so you're here because you didn't want to listen to your parents, and you're now you're asking me for change. I said, let me tell you something. So now my boys are screaming. The cars pull up like, hey, man, we got to go. We got to go. Right. I said, no, nah, man. Go on. They tripped out. But I do shit like this all the time, though. They jump in the cars. They take off. And I'm telling I'm like, and I have a talk with them. I stayed with them for about 20 minutes. I never told them who I was. I just told them what I've been through. You know? 
told him these streets are tough. If you can go home, go to school, get a part-time job, enjoy the resources you have. That's what happens to a lot of young kids these days. They don't understand, man. We are truly blessed in this country, man. We got a toilet. We got a sink. We got a car. We got a fridge. Man, I've been places down in Mexico, man, where they're still peeing in the floor. Yeah. Okay? We have such resources, man. Even the people in the projects, I didn't realize how much they really have. But we, we, see, we, we, we look at poverty different. Yeah, we have shelter, roofs, electricity. Man, if you look at the world... If you look at yourself as a world citizen and not an American citizen, but a world citizen, you realize that everyone in this country is rich. And, and that's what everything is. It's a it's a world economy that people yeah. don't fucking understand. Or they don't get. understand it. Yeah. But when you when you know when you I watched a documentary with these cats in India who've been working salt mines for like I, 10 I, generations. I was, I was in India, which is a fucking trip. India. Yeah. But give me a sec. I'm going to put a quick pause. Yeah. Man, I had to take a piss. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I had to take a piss. So we were talking about uh, um, how lucky we have it. Oh, yeah. You know, in, the, in, in America. The United, in America yeah, and, and compared to India. And yeah, yeah. Like, uh, just around the world. Even areas of China, just everywhere, man. man everywhere. It, the, the poverty there is poverty. Yeah. Right? Poverty here on a world stage is still not poverty. Yeah. Right? It's just not. You know? Well, I, I think the biggest difference, too, is that what we deal with that other countries don't deal with is our poverty isn't necessarily the world's poverty, mm-hmm. but we're, we're this melting pot of all these different races and, yeah. and people. And there's so much fucking hate of, you know, like this person versus that person and you're white, but you're more red and this person's, you know, Asian and this person's black. And there's so much fucking, you have Christians and Jews and Muslims and Nazis and fucking like Hindus. It's so fucking wild that, that I think that's, that's, that's what makes America beautiful and crazy. crazy. Because like, that's why, that's why you see like, you know, mass shootings, or that's why you see uh, people losing their shit. And then the other thing is, it's fucking crazy about America is it's really hard to find like, like comfort or, or love or a spouse or, or things in this country, you know, like, like you go to South America, everybody's so warm and everybody wants to communicate. Hey, how are you? I, I saw you. Hey, you, I saw you with your kids. Do you need help? You know, with groceries, whatever. It just seems like the world is more supportive in a sense for that. But well, here, you know, like in America, but here everybody's so fucking independent. Well, and and you know, like in in Chicago, you have Little Italy. You got Greek Town, Chinatown. You have all these towns. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying these right. different cultural areas, and. You you rarely you rarely see people mix within those areas. Yeah, right. Like Chicago is really segregated, but it's it's not just black and white. It's it's everyone. Right. The Greeks are with the Greeks. The Jewish are with the Jewish. The you know the Arabs are with the Arabs. So you don't really see too much, and and it's almost in every city, right? Like if you could go into L.A. and you know where all the Jewish or Jewish people are living. Right? Yeah. There's areas that they all are, right? Because their culture right. is similar and their food is similar and the stores are similar, right? And what, what happens is people get stuck in that, right? And it's hard for them to step out of it, right? And to to open up to the other culture, you know? I've seen it a lot because I've been around a lot of different cultures. You know, I haven't been stuck in just one white race. Yeah, you know? no, no. I, I understand what yeah. you're saying. It does exist all over the world yeah. or all over the country. country. But like... Like for example, it like like Russia's going through this whole war thing and they're attacking yeah. Ukraine, whatever you yeah. want whatever you want to say it or however you want to say it. The thing is is the Russian people yeah. are Russian. Russian people. Exactly. Like they bleed. Everybody yeah. bleeds Russian, Russian you know? Yeah. Yeah. Chinese people are fucking Chinese. Chinese yeah. Koreans are Korean. Koreans. America is um, America's a, a mixing yeah. pot. Like mixing you know, pot. like, oh yeah. shit, war, it's coming here. Maybe yeah. I'll go back to home to yeah. like yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Canada, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 You know, so that that's what I mean. Like 
like it's it's such a mixing pot yeah. and that creates its own challenges especially yeah, like sure. when you have like the muslims or christians yeah. or jewish or yeah. whatever the case is well, they say overall it's we're experiment. doing good yeah right. overall it's a good it's it's it is yeah it is a big exper- um, experiment you know like it, it's been what going on for oh, 300, 200 years almost 300, 300. yeah yeah, not long. Yeah, it's so, not long at all. Yeah, so, we're so we'll seeing, see what happens. We'll see, you know, but nah, it, but it's still America is the most beautiful country in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely, know? absolutely. And 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 I lo- I've I've traveled seriously. I've probably traveled every road on this in this country. I mean, I've got like three million mile driver miles, man. I mean, just recently I drove across the whole country. I went from L.A. to Texas to Miami to New York to Chicago back to L.A. No, just did that. 22 days, 15,322 miles. I think Enterprise is probably going to change their unlimited miles because of me. For real. I had the truck for 22 days. They got you calculated, 22 man. days, dog. I did 15,000 miles. How do you do that? 22 days, 15,000 miles. All around the, the country. I was rolling. Man. Even selling art. It's a great time. But no, I've been, this country is beautiful, man. You get out there, you know? Yeah. That is beautiful. Um, there, there's a, something that I saw in one of your videos online, and it was, uh, it was ba- uh, paint, making counterfeit money and doing art. It's not that much of a difference, right? Nah, not at all. I mean, it's creation, right? You're taking something blank, and then you're putting an image on it. Just money happens to be, you know, the financial power, right? And right. Then, but art is a financial power, too, though, right? It has yeah. its own... So there's so many similarities from even the you know the colors and the, the mixing of, of colors and uh, the the detail right you know so some of my early work you know is so detailed because I, I did it in prison so I had time you know uh, there's a piece I did it was an 1896 one dollar bill um, it's a woman on front pointing to the to the the capital. And it took me like almost a year to paint it. But she's sitting on this this pillar and it has like a bunch of tiny little lines on it. it took me three months to paint that thing. One haired brush, like ten thousand lines. Like some of my early work is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. You still got it? No, I sold it, you know, when I got out. You know, art saved me. You know, I sell a piece here, sell a piece there when I needed it the most. Now I don't get that opportunity to paint like that, you know. Uh, my my art had to evolve with being free, you know. But yeah, man, the the the, the art and the and the counterfeit, and you know, they they have, you know, I think that's why I've been able to sustain independently so long without going to an art school, without having an art manager, an art publisher, an art broker, right? I mean, it, it, it's a tough tough industry. Be an yeah. artist and then to feed kids with it and to live off it, like is even tougher. You know, most artists are single. A lot of artists, friends I meet, they don't have kids, you know. A lot it's of them are easy. single, right? I actually have a family that I take care of, which makes it very stressful because you have to wait on the sale most of the time, right? You know, it's, it, I mean, everyone, you hear about these artists who, you know, they had this event and they sold out, right? I've had good moments. You know, equivalent to that, but it's 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 not every time, not at all, not even close. You know, and uh, but you know, your moment will come. You just got to keep moving. You know, and I think I think, you know, the counterfeiting, the one thing for sure that well, the judge told me something when he when I was getting sentenced, he said he said, you know, I, I'm hearing you're the, the the best in the world at print money. And I've not, not even seen this money that they're talking about. And I want to see it before I sentence you. And so the, the prosecutor gave it to them. They took it up to the judge, and he's looking at it. And he's like, yeah, this is really good, Mr. Williams. It would have fooled me. He said, how long did it take you to get, you know, to get this good? And I told him, I said, man, Your Honor, I mean, I've been doing it for 15 years, and I'm still learning, you know. He said, he goes, what do you think you could have done in 15 years if you would have applied that time and energy to the right thing? He said, I promise you, you could have been the best at it. If you would have done the same amount of work and, and, 
and the same amount of energy, you would have been the best at it. Man, that shit stuck with me, dog. You know? Like when I went when I went back to my cell, all I could just keep thinking, damn, I wasted 15 years. 15 years, man, just on one thing, never stopping, didn't give a shit what was in front of me. I was gonna figure it out. But then I I let what he said, because he, he finished it, because he said, I'm I'm gonna have to give you some time. And I hope you really think about it. And I hope you really decide to use the time to become the best at something else. And and that right there is what happened, right? It was the same characteristics I used I to, to defeat the 100 and to print it in the art world, right? Same thing. The same... Being able to overcome the obstacles, the same trying to figure it out, the same not quitting, right? Those things is, and, and, and granted, you know, if I stepped into something else, right, with the same 15 years, so right now I'm at nine. I'm at nine years free, you know? So I got another six before I hit that 15 mark, right? It's going to be really, I'm, it's going to be a big year for me. As long as I live through it, right? That 15 years, I'm going to look back and I want to say, what did I do with the 15 years? All right, because those one 15 years, I was printing money. Now I'm listening I'm to the judge. This is the next 15 years. Where am I? Where I where I envision myself being is a top artist in the world who's helping people, and you know maybe you know. Revisiting writing, revisiting some of my inventions that I wanted to do, but for sure, a top artist. Right, that will happen. Right, absolutely. Yeah, you know. And so, the counterfeiting in, in the art, the simulators are the characteristics that it took to become the best at it. You know, and I'm not the best painter. Right, I admit that I didn't go to school for it. I didn't learn from no teachers. I didn't study under a master. I learned from experience. You know, the experience of working on the canvas, working with my hands, working with my mind, you know. And so, you know, those are the things, you know. But th there was something I wanted to get back to you with you. We were talking about this young man that I had talked with on the, on the street. Where I gave him some cash. That's right. And then you had your friends go. And they'd lift, right? Yeah. So here's this kid asking me for change. And I'm asking him what's going on. He's telling me that because his, you know, he got kicked out because he didn't want to listen to his parents. And I told him, I said, "Here, I'm going to give you some money to get home, but to get home, I'm not going to give you change. I'm going to give you some dollars. I want you to take your ass home, and I want you to to listen to your parents." I said, "Can you do that for me, man?" He said, "You know what, man? I will. I want to go home. I don't want to be out here no more." I gave him some money. About three months later, I can show you the, the, the message on my Facebook, right? I get this, this random message from someone, and guess who it was? It was that kid. And he said, Mr. Williams, I wanted to give you an update on my life. I listened to you that night, and I went home, and I went back to school for carpentry. He said, and then my mom got sick. And she's no longer with us, and now I'm taking care of my dad. He goes, I want you, I want to thank you because I didn't know who you were that night, but I went and looked you up, and, and you know, he said, Oh, you're this, but you took time with me when you didn't have to. And I want you to know that I'm doing good. That that one fucking message from him made it. It made everything seem right. It made all the bullshit. It made all the all the crap I went through. It made all it, it that one fucking message made me feel like that's why I'm human. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm alive. That's why I'm telling my story. Because it really does help people. You know, we go through life, man, just moving. Boom, 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 boom. 
very rarely do we notice the man on the corner, except, you know, he's got this sign. And maybe the first thought is he real, is he not? Right? That's what we do. But he's still a human. Right? He, he's still a, a person. You know? And and who, who are we to say that you can't touch that person at the right time? Maybe giving that change doesn't do shit for him. But maybe it does. Maybe it does, man. Maybe you change that 21-year-old kid who's begging for change who's now going to school to be a carpenter. He still reaches out to me. He's doing great now. Graduate school. He's in the union. Right? So even if my whole life was meant shit, as long as I know that that kid is doing well, it gives value to my life through other people being successful. That's where humanity's got away from shit. We think success is us, me, I. Right? Success is us, man. The fucking world. You know? And so that's, you know, that's how I live now. You know? And 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 that's why I like doing these, talking. Right? This has been the, probably the, one of the coolest ones because I just get to be me right now. But, you know, so this whole thing, this whole story, the counterfeit and the art, all of it, you know, it's all leading to something. I don't know what it is yet, you know. The big plan. The big plan. But I know that I'm on the right journey, right? I know that I'm on that 15 years, see where the fuck I'm going to be. And right? I'm at nine years now. Free. Nine years, you know, believing in six years professional artist. You know, and so we'll see what happens, man. I'll come back in another six, see where I'm at. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, you, you, you think you're going to, uh, once you figure it out and you're satisfied, you're like, oh, fuck, this is it. You think you're going to write to that judge and say, hey, man, you fucked me up with those words on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know and on that, Facebook and be like, yeah. yo. Yeah, no, I'd like to go see him personally. Yeah. Go see and the, reach out to him. Yeah, somehow. yeah. Reach out to him, man, and say, you know what, man, I, I don't know if this happens much. But what you told me changed my life, and now I tell people that could possibly change their life. Yeah. So the shit really works. Yeah. We just have to take time, you know? Just take time with people and care about them. Like, genuinely care about them. Yeah. You know? And, and, and it's not just with, like, strangers but it's just with your own friends with your friends, own family, family. check yeah. in on them check in so you man. see how they're doing you know yeah. fucking yeah i'll do a thing where i'll go through my phone man my contacts you know and just kind of scroll through it and just pick one hey how you doing man haven't heard from you in a while All right just little things that you can do you know and people so do easy. It to, yeah and Except the people do it to me though now right I'll get I'll I'll be going through some shit, man, and then all of a sudden I'll get a text from somebody, man, just telling me, hey, man, really proud of you, bro, love you. Just those four words, five words, man. Yeah, make you feel like, damn, okay, I'm loved. Okay, I keep doing this shit. Because that's what happens to a lot of us, man. We go through life feeling alone. Nothing sad, you know. You hear about how the elite, they all have this money, but they're unhappy. You know, some of them are, some ain't. You know, I don't know. But there's a lot of people who have but don't have. Yeah. Right? They got they got everything, but then they don't have nothing. Why? There's a reason, man. You know. And so those are the kind of things that I've had to to tackle with in my life, you know. To to change as a person, to become free. Right? Real free. Because at the end, man, that's really all, all that, you know, for me, it, that's what it all started from. Desiring freedom. Desiring mental freedom, spiritual freedom, physical freedom. You know, financial freedom. So my mind, it's always on freedom, 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 you know. It's like pumps in my blood. You know? So, you know, I think that... Once you acquire those things, man, you know, 
that's the shaman, right? That's that shit, man. That, you know, sitting in the Tibetan monk's house for 20 years to reach, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So, but we're here. Right? We're going to do right. it now. Yeah. Fucking so, enjoy it. Fucking enjoy it, man. We're going to do it for next time we do yeah. a podcast. Yeah, I'm here, uh, bro. Anytime you want me back, man, you're my cause, boy, Because I got to get you back for... Um, when you got hit by light, hit by light, do it now because you yeah. just closed so fucking solid. Yeah. What's your social media page? What's your website? How do we get a hold uh, of you? ArthurJWilliamsJr.com. My my website, ArthurJWilliamsJr. At for my Instagram, and same with my Facebook. I just use my name for everything, man. That's fucking yeah, perfect. Just man. keep when I see these people's Instagram and it's like, man, who is that? It's like some crazy New York City. Da, da, da. I'm like, man, I'm just using my name, man. Yeah. See, I keep it simple, dog. You know. But, uh, man, bro, thanks for having me, man. Of course, man. Thank you for coming. Yeah, this is great, man.